Kharkiv, as is known, is the scientific, cultural and educational center of Ukraine. What was the effect of war on these spheres? What are the future prospects? How the scientific is and cultural community experiencing modern challenges? Today we are discussing these and other issues in the new project, Perspectives, in which we plan to synthesize the conversation about culture, science and education. Greetings. This is the Perspectives Project. Today's guest of our program is Anatoly Babishev, Vice Rector of the Kharkiv National University named after Karazin. Anatoly Babishev was born on July 1, 1980, in Kharkiv. In 2002, graduated from the Kharkiv National University, named after B. N. Karazin, Department of Mechanics and Mathematics. In 2005, graduated from the Kharkiv National University of Economics with a master degree in state service. In 2002 to 2006, worked in various positions in the Department of Education and Science of the Kharkiv Regional State Administration. In 2006 to 2009, worked in the Kharkiv Regional State Administration as an assistant to the deputy head of the State Administration for Humanitarian Affairs. At the same time, he continued teaching activity. In 2009 to 2010, held the position of the head of the Department for Family and Youth Affairs of the Kharkiv Regional State Administration. In 2016 to 2019, he was the deputy head of the Kharkiv Regional State Administration. From December 2019 to present day, he is the vice rector for scientific and pedagogical work of the Kharkiv National University, named after V.N. Karazin, candidate of sciences in public administration, honored worker of education of Ukraine. Recently, many ratings have been published, and one of the ratings gave our university a very high and very good position from the point of view of higher education institutions' ratings. Please tell us about it in more details. Actually, a very interesting question. Because, on the one hand, ratings are a formality, and on the other hand, they greatly contribute to the university, students, and scientists work working at the university. I would like to start with very well-known rankings, British, in particular, the QS ranking, in which our university, the Kharkiv National University named after Karazin, was the first among Ukrainian universities for a decade. Last year, due to the war, the Kiev Shevchenko University slightly overtook us, but at the same time, we are one of the few universities that remain in the cohort of the best universities in the world. Today, there are many new ratings, prospective ratings, because usually, traditionally, the first places were held by American, European universities, and some Asian universities. Today, new Asian and Turkish ratings are appearing, which, roughly speaking, evaluate the university's activities with a slightly different approach. And so one of the young interesting, very progressive Turkish ratings gave us a very serious position. And to be honest, for us it is also a small incentive for development. And let me explain in brief, what are the ratings for at all. If you are looking for international partners, if you are looking for international projects, Projects, international grants, the first thing you look for is the rating of the university where you work. If the university is not in the rating, then the chance of receiving a certain project or grant is not very great. It is possible, but there are many complications. Our Kharkiv University named after Karazin, if you open any rating, it is in the top of the world's universities, and of course everyone wants to conclude some kind of agreement, partnership relations, and of course to encourage our scientists for cooperation. Therefore, it is beneficial for everyone, including students who have a diploma of our university, who receive a diploma after completing their studies. With this diploma, you can find a job in any institution, in any country of the world. Because the university is in the top of the rating and the diploma is essentially recognized in any country in the world. Diploma 
According to the Turkish rating higher education ranking, this year, Karazin University took the first place among 15 Ukrainian universities and the second place in the overall rating. The rating included 303 institutions of higher education from Georgia, Moldova, Germany, Saudi Arabia, Slovenia, Turkey, Hungary, and other countries. The rating evaluates universities according to 25 criteria, including research activities, internationalization, academic freedom, and sustainable development. We are all proud that our Kharkiv University is in such a top list. Now let me mention the situation of our greatest concern, the ongoing war. We know that the Kharkiv Karazin University has suffered very large material losses. The Faculty of Economics has even become one of the symbols of this aggression. There is a lot of destruction in other buildings of the university as well. Material and non-material losses, how do you manage to cope with them at this time? After all, it is really very difficult now, and speaking about what is now destroyed in the university, are you alone with these problems or is there any help from the city, the state? A very important and very difficult question. The university has suffered damages or loss of nearly 25% of all university-owned property. This figure 25% means losses of entire educational complexes. You mentioned the Faculty of Economics, we can also mention the Faculty of Physics and Technology, the sports complex of the university, several dormitories that were destroyed, the building of the Institute of Public Administration administration, which was partially destroyed, and in fact, there is a lot of such damage. Most of them were incurred in the spring of 2022, it was such a despair of both the university administration and the scientists that the university was collapsing. An opinion came to us, and a very correct opinion, that the university is not all about buildings. These are people, these are scientists, these are teachers, are our students, are our staff who work and study at the university. And this gave us an impetus not to stop our work, but on the contrary, to continue developing. Therefore, now, during the war, when most of the processes still take place online, although there is an offline part, and we are always glad to see students at the university, in principle, premises and property does not play the main role now in ensuring educational and scientific activities and what we have now is currently enough for our activities. Of course, there were problems with the main buildings, because there were nearby barrage hits, certain destructions, a large number of windows, roof, life support system, heat supply, water supply also suffered certain destructions, so we are trying to put all this in order. The university is working, it has not stopped working, it is developing and we have many new projects, ideas, and areas of activity, and of course we try to preserve and update the material base. We are not one-on-one -on -one with the challenges. Of course, the university also works a lot, a lot of our graduates and friends of the university help the university through the Karazin Fund for the restoration of the university. Our state is also helping, as part of the funds, including those for the restoration of windows, was allocated by the Ministry of Education and Science of Ukraine. Charitable foundations are also helping, regional and city authorities at their level also provide some help in organizing work, and I would like to remind that with the help of the authorities, we have received power generators, for instance. That is, there is a certain amount of help. And, of course, our international partners. Today, I would also like to note the embassy of Germany in Ukraine, after shelling on January 2nd, Mr. Ambassador came to the university, looked at the situation. And the company Reho produced and installed new windows, while the German state fund gives, which is also holding a tender today and also about 500 windows will be installed for their help. There are also a lot of different funds. I would like to note those from Sweden, Great Britain and Canada, who usually provide help through joint efforts. And certain are honorary doctors help 
help out, too. Well, roughly speaking, you can call it the Karazin University community, friends of the university. Therefore, the university is not alone, there is always lack of something, but we receive very serious help almost every day. We understand that a university is, first of all, comprised of its people. These are teachers, professorship, students. What is the current situation with the teaching staff? How do you solve these problems? After all, we know that a lot of people have left Kharkiv. What is the situation in the university regarding these issues? I can't call the situation great, but it is quite good and quite interesting. I read a lot and heard that a lot of teachers, professors at other universities went abroad, and they were fired for going abroad and so on. We do not have such a situation. Indeed, a certain part of our teachers, professors, and scientists have went abroad, many of them are still there today, but this corporatism of the Karazin University community, the Karazin spirit, it really works. Because among those who left the country, almost none left the university. Today, they conduct classes and lectures for our students in online format, who have the opportunity to organize practical classes, internships, seminars abroad, where they currently reside. And in fact, there is a lot of scientific research, thanks to the fact that our teachers today are in the leading scientific centers of the world and continue their scientific work there, on their material and technical base. Their research, the theoretical part of which was developed by us. And these are bonuses for the university, these are also contributions to the ratings, these are also publications using the most modern equipment that currently exists. Moreover, as I have already said, many new interesting scientific projects appeared at the university thanks to new collaborations. These are our ambassadors of the university, roughly speaking, being in other countries, looking for new partners and new projects. And it basically works. Therefore, unfortunately, part of the professorship is not located in Kharkiv, but thanks to the fact that they actively work and do not leave the university, and continue to work at the university, quite a lot of new opportunities appear. This allows the university to develop and enrich both education activities and science of Ukraine as a whole. Speaking about the studentship, we know that Kharkiv is called a student city and it is symbolic and important that there would be many students here. How do you see the solution to this problem now? What are the current trends and prospects for us with this issue? In fact, this is a very complex problem. Both the state and the local authorities should think about it. I understand that they are already thinking about it, but unfortunately there are no effective mechanisms. Only a victory in the war can change the situation. A certain part of our students is abroad, outside the Kharkiv region. As you have probably heard, we have certain educational hubs abroad providing offline educational services. In particular, in Germany, in the city of Munich. Where there are many forcibly displaced students, they study full-time. They have a fully equipped offline process there. Therefore, part of the students, almost 40%, is currently outside the Kharkiv region. Some of the students have the opportunity to come to the university and get some practical skills, take part in certain events. Others, unfortunately, only have access to distance education. What are the prospects? You said correctly, Kharkiv has always been the student and youth capital of Ukraine and Eastern Europe. One of the largest educational centers of Eastern Europe. 
With a huge number of institutions of higher education, very diverse, very interesting. In fact, it was the top city in Ukraine in terms of the number of students and universities. The situation is changing. We always had 35 to 40 percent of applicants from the Kharkiv region, other students came to study from Donetsk, Luhansk regions, Crimea, Zaporizhia, Kherson, Dnipropetrovsk, Sumy, and Poltava regions. With the geography listed, you realize that most of these regions are currently zones of active hostilities or territories under occupation. Therefore, our geography is changing, and unfortunately, it is very difficult for the university to work only for Kharkiv residents. Because the number of students has significantly decreased, and, accordingly, if the number of students decreases, the educational load on teachers decreases as well. And an acute question may arise regarding the provision of work for our teachers. Therefore, today, unfortunately, it is difficult to say that we can increase the number of students, but this is a very important issue and we are working on it. And I am sure that the university will always have students who will gladly come to the classrooms, do science, make new inventions, discoveries. And of course glorify Ukraine and the city of Kharkiv outside our country. As for September 2023, in terms of the number of students, Kharkiv ranks second in Ukraine after Kiev. In general, about 11% of all students in the country study in Kharkiv. This data was reported by the People's Deputy Yulia Hershina. Mayor of Kharkiv Ayer Terekov noted that before the start of the full-scale invasion, about 300,000 students from Ukraine and other countries of the world were studying in the city. Антон Валерьевич, ми з вами ще до війни дуже багато спілкувалися на ну, до душого це таку чутливу для вас і для мене е, тему того, що стосується even before the war, you and I talked about a very sensitive topic for us, namely the triad, as we call it, which is important for any highly developed state. This is a question of what such a state is supposed to possess, fundamental science, classical universities, and academic culture. And this is the concern of the state in the first place. Because these sectors are not supposed to be profitable, highly profitable, but only partially and mostly should be supported by the state. And now, during the war, we understand that this situation is very difficult and complicated. How do you see the role of the state in supporting these three trends, which are the most important for the Kharkiv region? After all, the Kharkiv region is an indicator of this part of our all-Ukrainian life. I can't deny that, I can only agree. You know my thoughts. Culture, art, education and science, they actually go hand in hand. If we want to be always winners, we must be highly developed, highly intelligent citizens. This is possible only by providing approaches not only educational and scientific, but also cultural and artistic. Without it, there will be no future for our nation, and there will be no future for our Ukraine. Of course, this is a mission that should be provided at least partially by the state. It won't happen without state assistance. When we talk about Kharkiv, I mentioned the largest center of education and science in Ukraine and Eastern Europe, but it is also the largest center of culture and art. With an incredible number of theaters, the Philharmonic. All theaters and all art institutions, they have a great history, traditions, achievements. I remember the old days, I remember our student days. Some wanted to, some didn't want to, but we always visited theaters to see a certain performance. Many people came from different regions of Ukraine who had never been to a theater. Someone claimed that people were forced to go to theaters. We did not force, we encouraged, and in fact, many people, coming to the theater for the first time, understood its nature. And they began to attend performances and so on. Today, of course, the situation in the country, in the city of Kharkiv, is difficult. 
In order to do science, you need to be enriched and inspired by something. And in my opinion, art itself should inspire scientists and educators to work and fill their students with this spirit. Unfortunately, the COVID epidemic started and the war continued the negative process when our school children have no access to May basic values today. Because online learning is the absence of possibility of direct communication, possibility of socialization. Last week I met with students of the Institute of Public Administration. I told them that they need to be able to communicate. Online educational process is all good. And today, many tasks are made online. But communication and socialization are one of the main elements for self-realization, including the career. And art together with the components of education and science provides it. I'm sure they're actually interrelated. We know examples of many scientists who were great artists, and of course, vice versa. When all this is combined, a person becomes very versatile. And I am sure that our theaters will soon be full of visitors, that we have important things to show, important messages to tell. And Kharkiv will become at least what it was. So that people from other regions come here to study and do science, and of course, to visit our art institutions. Well, getting back to science. You have mentioned science. These are really very difficult times now. While some issues related to education can be transferred to an online mode, it is difficult to imagine that science can be done online. Besides, of course, communication, conferences, exchange of information, but the science itself is still developed on-site in scientific institutions. Karazin University is one of the huge scientific, specifically scientific centers. Tell me how this side of your activity is developing and how you live, because because it is very important for Kharkiv? We live, work and do science. And is it important for the country at all? Definitely. It is important to solve both fundamental and applied problems that are solved by science. Apparently, as I understand, certain military problems are also being solved now. Definitely. There came an understanding, and now it has become even more profound, finally. That without applied, natural sciences, it is impossible to ensure the defense capability of our country. Therefore, science can of course be somewhat theoretical, social and humanitarian sectors can also conduct research, for example, sociological surveys and so on, or hold conferences. But the direction of mathematics, natural scientists, physicists, chemists, biologists, it is not possible without a practical component. It is impossible both in medicine and in archaeology. Many things can be mentioned. I already said that some of our scientists today are outside Ukraine, where they have access to the most innovative equipment in modern centers of science development, where research is also conducted and this adds a lot to our scientific activity today. Our labs are full of people and they are working. We manage to organize operation of part of them in safe environments, part of them work at other locations and bases, let's say so. In particular, on the basis of academic institutes of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. That's why the work is boiling. Moreover, I can say that both master degree and postgraduate students who write their papers and conduct research have access to these university laboratories, where they implement research and conduct their scientific works. Therefore, the university is not completely online, the university has the ability to provide a certain number of people the necessary conditions to come to work and conduct research. Moreover, biologists deal with processes and researches that need to be conducted 24 hours a day, with constant energy supply, specific temperature regime, and all this is very difficult for us, but thanks to scientists. It is possible to continue these processes, implement them and so on. Therefore, I want to say that science is working, science is actively working, science is also working in the practical component, and in my opinion, according to the rating of Scopus publications, for the past year, Kharkiv Karazin University continues to occupy an honorable second place 
place in the ranking of scientific research. These are the most highly rated scientific publications in Scopus, we have strengthened our level and even increased it. This means that the research that we conduct and provide in scientific articles, as well as participations in conferences, it is really highly praised and has a certain positive result. Thank you. The next question is also about science, but from a little different side, from the point of view of the fact that you have a lot of experience as a state official, as a person who dealt a lot with practical and theoretical problems of public administration. You are a candidate of sciences in public administration and you know the scientific and practical part of this process. Tell me, during the war, the problems of state administration, do they need additional scientific approaches and changes that can result in adopting specific decisions, both at the state level and at the level of local self-governing authorities? A very important and complex question for the whole of Ukraine and for the Kharkiv region. Therefore, it is a very apt question. I can say that indeed, it needs such approaches. And most importantly, the primary issue is the general availability of civil servants who can provide the functions of the state. And I will start with the occupied territories, and secondly, with the liberated territories. Many people in the occupied territories left their homes and became forcibly displaced people. Today, after the liberation, many people do not return to the territories where they previously worked and lived. Unfortunately, part of the state employees cooperated with the occupiers. After that of course no one will ever admit them to public administration or work for our country. In general, I would like to say that the university cooperates very actively, in particular, with the Institute of Public Administration, with the permanent representation of the Republic of Crimea in Kiev. There is a general question there, because there are no officials left at all, who in the near future, after the liberation of Crimea, can enter the territory and perform the functions of the state. This is the most pressing issue, the same situation is in Donetsk and Luhansk regions. This issue is acute for the Kharkiv region as well. In general, I would define, in addition to civil servants, the categories of teachers, doctors and social workers. This is what the state should ensure in these territories. And these people are gone today. Therefore, our task is, first of all, to train such people who will be able to work and will be able to ensure the execution of state functions in these territories. And of course, you have mentioned science. I agree with you. Because what was before the war and what is happening now are completely different approaches. I would like to mention that, in addition to solving the urgent problems of communities, territories, and the local population, it is also necessary to master international issues, because all the politics that take place in our country, including state policy, are conducted through the prism of international relations. After all, first of all, the economy is not working very well today, and secondly, the territories that we mentioned have suffered losses in terms of industry, agriculture, problems of demoning of territories, and environmental issues. This is a complex problem. I mean social and economic programs for the restoration of certain areas, including spatial design of territories. These are also new competencies that were previously either not provided at all, or were provided in a completely different format to our civil servants. This is the point where science is to appear, in particular, the science of management of change of public state administration. A lot of new interesting topics arise here. It's a separate question. By the way, we have recently held a round table regarding collaborators and collaboration in general, dedicated to working with those people who were under occupation, who were affected by enemy influence.
There are many medical and psychological issues in this regard. This is a very serious interdisciplinary program. I recalled Crimea. If we enter Crimea after liberation, the majority of the population will remain the same as before the deoccupation. What relations did they have with the occupiers? Did they work for them? What about people who worked in certain state organizations? This is a large number of questions, many of which are not answered today. Therefore, science is to be used, including the necessary researches, so that we can really make the right choice and the right trend for the recovery and development of our country. Дякую. Ну і нарешті переходимо до культури. Ми знаємо, що це Харазенський університет є дійсно... Фінальні, давайте перейдемо до культури. We know that the Karazin University is also a real center of culture, a direct center, holding a lot of exhibitions, a lot of events related to culture. You very actively participate in the events that our theater and other cultural institutions are holding. Please tell me more specifically what is being done now. What are the plans? What kind of assistance in this direction do you need, or perhaps you can handle it yourselves? Well, first of all, I would like to thank you personally and in your person the entire National Opera and Ballet Theater named after Lysenko for being our reliable friends and partners who are always by our side. Those whom we always invite to the university, and we are very frequent guests at all theater events. This is a continuation of communication between education and science, and culture. Because we believe that we should also give this cultural aspect to our scientists and our students. It happened as it happened, the war began. And our Yermolov Center, the center of modern art, is currently located in a basement premises. In the first weeks of the war, artists who stayed in Kharkiv gathered there, they lived there because it was dangerous at home. This is the kind of place that has grown from a bunker where people lived into an art center. It was already a very famous art center, but mostly a center of modern art, where famous artists exhibited their works. Young and famous artists and so on. But the fact is that the city needed a cultural life and it was found right here. First of all, because it could provide a safe environment there. Yermolov Center is a contemporary art center in Kharkiv, opened in March 2012. Named in honor of the famous Kharkiv artist, representative of the Ukrainian avant-garde, Vassil Yermolov. The largest exhibition space in Kharkiv Yermolov Center represents modern Ukrainian art processes. The center's priorities are artistic dialogue with the audience and international cooperation. The activities of the Yermolov Center include curatorial projects, artistic residencies, lectures and discussions, performances, seminars, cinema, video installations. Well, there were very few such serious exhibitions in 2022 to 2023. But there were an incredible number of small-scale performances, book presentations and festivals. Our Kharkiv Media Hub was located there in the first year of the war. Therefore, foreign journalists, everyone who came to the city, were able to meet there. I can also recall concerts and festivals with the participation of Sviatoslav Vakarchuk and Serhii Zhadan. I can't even remember many things today. For the university. It was a blessing, actually. Because all art is here, in a safe environment. Therefore, our students and employees had the opportunity to participate in all this. The Opera Theatre was also invited, which also helped us, performed on our stage. Therefore, it became a center of cultural life of the city, we realized it and supported it. And although this is a certain economic burden, nevertheless, everything that happened was worth it.
The center was visited by various guests, foreign diplomats, partners, everyone was there. The university became a part of the whole life that took place in the city of Kharkiv during the first years of the war. More specifically, we mentioned Serhi Zhadan. I know that some big project is starting now, specifically with Serhi Zhadan. Tell us more about this project, because it is very interesting to find out what it is. It so happened that the cooperation between the university and Serhi Zhadan is a separate story, I don't even know how old this story is. Probably 10 years, or more. Because meetings of students with the 5th Kharkiv took place as early as 10 years ago, and maybe even earlier, maybe even 15 years ago. It so happened that in January 2022, on the eve of the start of the war, Serhi Zhadan was elected the honorary doctor of our university. In this way we, so to say, cement the relations that existed between Serhi and us. Serhi is actually very interested in this topic, he is very inspired in studies, the fifth Kharkiv, created by Yuri Shevelyov, graduate of our university, professor and honorary doctor of the university. Therefore, many of these projects were associated with Yuri Shevelyov. Serhi Zhadan became an active member of the Karazin University community. I will stop here for a bit, to mention his charity performances, creative meetings, in particular, in the city of Lucerne, Switzerland, which provided assistance for the restoration of the damaged Central Scientific Library in Kharkiv, and so on. Recently, a very interesting and fruitful meeting of Serhi Zhadan with our students was held, therefore, we have many ideas and many projects that we are implementing and I believe we will continue this process. There are plans to create a small center, but there is no official name yet. The working name is, Jadan Center. This is supposed to be an artistic and literary center, where both students and pupils will have the opportunity to communicate with artists and writers, certain contests and literary evenings will be held, and so on. That is why we are actively working on this project. So far I can't say when it will be released, but I know that it will happen. We are sure that it will happen. Definitely, yes. Finally, the last question. It is traditional for our program, because we are now in the opera theater. Please tell me, if you had an opportunity to choose a character to play, what would it be? A very interesting question. It really resonated with me. I adore theaters and have been visiting them since childhood. That's why I get pleasure and wait for all these grand halls of the National Opera and Ballet Theater named after Lysenko and other drama theaters of the city to open. It is hard to answer. I remember an opera, I don't know how many years ago it was, it was the premiere of Prince Igor. I remember that the performance lasted for five or six hours. It was a very serious event. But I remembered it very well. As far as I remember, there was an episode of the Palazzian dances there. It is from this opera, right? Therefore, I there are a lot of characters to choose from, well, I don't know, let it be Prince Igor. The character was great, it seems very interesting to me. And even topical. Indeed. In principle, it can also be Mazepa. I don't know if this performance still exists. Yes, it does. There are certain nuances, actually related to both these performances. There are nuances everywhere, we understand that. This is enough. Let's not delve into history. Such characters of heroic statesmen are to your liking. Well, after all, you mentioned that I was a state official and so on. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Anatoly. Let me remind you that our guest today was Anatoly Babishev, Vice-Rector of the Kharkiv Karazin University. Thank you for the invitation and a wonderful interview within the walls of the theater.